It's Gary Lugas with Obsidian Painting here. And uh, so today we're going to be doing the non-metallic metal guy. We've been promising this for quite some time. And uh, <clears throat> essentially, the the model's already base coated snake bite leather. Uh, if you've been following along previously, you know that already. Uh, and right now, I'm just going to start by uh, adding kind of you know, bu bubonic brown to the snake by leather to kind of give a more yellowy um, kind of color to the snake by leather. And I'm just going to thin that down. Uh, this is my usual glazing or selective glazing blending thing I do. Uh, it's thinned down to about four parts water to uh, up to six parts water per one part paint. Uh, I don't use a specific method for for figuring that out, I just keep adding water until it becomes the consistency I want, which is about um, almost like as soon as it turns into colored water, that's when you know you've got a nice um, dilution. So all I'm doing is I'm picking out all the raised areas, I'm hitting the abdomen, uh, the top part of the abdomen, the top part of the chest, the um, just all the the upper bits, I suppose. Uh, even when it comes to the serratus kind of looking muscles on the rib cage, there, uh, they uh, I'm just hitting the top parts of them. I'm not hitting the whole thing. And what that's going to do is that's going to kind of create the illusion of of light coming from up above. And uh, with non-metallic metal paint, or not paint. Um, non-metallic metal, I guess before I even explain a lot of other stuff, uh, I should explain non-metallic metal. Now, non-metallic metal is really, it's not a technique, because as you can see, the technique I'm using is I'm using my selective glazing, blending thingamabob. Um, and the, what I'm doing is, is non-metallic metal is more so a way to apply highlights and in shadows, like where to put them. It's not in itself a technique. So um, I just wanted to clarify that. But um, I, another key point is I do thin my paint down, but also remember that once you thin the paint down, don't just take your thin paint and put that on the mini. What you want to do is you also want to get a piece of paper towel, and after you thin the paint, um, <clears throat> wipe your brush off on a piece of paper towel. Dip it in the paint and then wipe it off on a piece of paper towel until nothing comes off. And then that leaves just enough moisture on the brush so when you uh, apply it to the model you, you get this kind of uh, really quick drying translucent layer which is what we're doing. That's what we want glazing and all this. All blending is with acrylic paints, because there's no such thing as uh, as true blending with acrylic paints. The only way to do that is to wet blend. Um, but wet blending is stupid, and even then, to do it efficiently, you have to do multiple layers. So really, the only true way to get a complete and uh, a full blend, a nice one anyways, uh, using acrylic paints is to layer. So, it, this isn't oil paints. Oil paints mix together and create completely true blends really easily. But um, acrylic paints don't because they're plastic, essentially. Whereas oil paints are oil and pigment, this is water, plastic, and pigment. And um, so, in that respect, it's not the greatest. So, <clears throat> what I did is I've just been doing this over and over again, multiple layers upon multiple layers, and I think um, I went up to a, I added a little bit of bleached bone to bubonic brown, I went to straight bubonic brown, and then I think I added a little bit of bleached bone, but uh, I'm not 100% sure if I did or not. That's okay, because in part two we're going to be going over the more extreme parts of painting this because right now we're just doing um, bleached bone or bubonic brown kind of down to about dark flesh and we're going to be that's going to be the basis of where we're going to put our 
shadows and highlights, and then we're going to actually apply kind of the non-metallic metal technique. So all I'm doing is I'm just shading and highlighting this as I would any normal uh, thing, like any normal material before. Uh, I'm hitting all the raised areas with a lighter paint, and I'm hitting all the shadows with a darker paint. It's nothing new. What, where the non-metallic metal technique comes in is when you apply the extreme highlights and where to place your shadows because uh, some shadows will kind of um, uh, complement the highlights so you can get kind of an off thing or a good thing or a bad thing uh, it all depends on how you do it so yeah I think I did go up to about a bleach bone uh, and now I'm just adding terracotta. Now this paint actually doesn't exist anymore. Um, so all I did was add a little bit of terracotta to snake bite, or the other way around. I added a little bit of snake bite to terracotta, thinned it down, uh, so that way it would blend in a little more. And the, that, like, uh, for adding the snake bite, anyways. Because if you just go straight to terracotta, uh, the pigment doesn't already. It's not part of the surface already. So what you do is you add a little bit of your base color in, and then that helps it blend in just a little bit more. So I went snake bite, uh, a little bit of snake bite with some terracotta, thinned it down, and then I went to straight terracotta. Now terracotta, um, you can't really replace this with anything else. There's no substitute. So if you don't have terracotta, just kind of skip it. There's, it's not necessary, but I like the warmth it adds to uh, to the gold. But once again, it's not necessary. You can just skip this, go right to dark flesh. Uh, but remember to add a little bit of snake bite leather. Just don't go straight to dark flesh. A little bit of snake bite leather. Um, and even after I'm done the terracotta, which is pretty much now, and when I start adding dark flesh, I'll add a little bit of terracotta to the dark flesh first. Help that blend in. And then I'll just keep going until I get down to about pure dark flesh. And remember, always keep a dilution of about four to five parts water to one part paint. And uh, that'll really help the, the blending happen. As you can see, it's already looking okay, or pretty good. Uh, don't worry about the, the lines up there at the chest at the very top of the chest there where the necklace is that that's all going to kind of come together once the necklace itself is painted uh, and shaded and whatnot but uh, there's really nothing fancy about how I paint uh, it's just thin down paint make sure to wipe it off on a paper towel before you apply it to the model and just do multiple layers uh, this whole thing probably took me about 20 minutes just to get to this part. Well, 20 to uh, maybe 30. And uh, really, if, if you're painting, uh, why not t just take a little bit more time to get this nice uh, blend, right? Really, you, you can do this. If you can't do this, then let me know and I will help you do this because it's not that hard. And uh, also, uh, make sure to check out the Wargamers Lounge. That's where I get all of my models. And uh, yeah, you can check that out. It's pretty cool. They have good prices. They have pretty much everything you could think of. Um, yeah, there's their website. And uh, yeah, be sure to subscribe and favorite the video and like it and all this other fancy stuff. Uh, yeah, all right. Cheers, guys. See you in part two.